Article from Politico talking about Obama's efforts to nudge America, to use behavioral science to adapt what you think in terms of the government or think about what the government tells you to follow their agenda. They call it now nudging. We used to call it propaganda. And when you look at this article from Infowars.com today about the Department of Justice creating a new domestic terrorism division, understand that the gloves have come off. They're actively and openly engaging in propaganda and assassination of their political enemies. They're trying to convince the public using social media and other sophisticated methods who their enemies are. And of course, we know who they think their enemies are. They have said and specifically say as they introduce this program, they're far more worried about domestic terrorists, about people who are anti-government than they are about Islamic jihadists that we have been told are the real targets. No, the real targets are the people who question the government's authority. They made that very clear, and Alex Jones pointed that out today when he said they want to talk about sovereign citizens who question the government's authority in a certain area. What about the illegal immigrants who come in and ignore everything about the government's authority? Of course, they're not concerned about them. That's what we need to be concerned about, a government that is going to use these tools, these, ass these assassination tools, these minority report tools, to identify their political opposition. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to talk to Joe Biggs, our reporter, who went to San Antonio today to cover the Hillary Clinton rally, and Michael Zimmerman, the cameraman who was with him. We'll be right back. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for Prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for President! Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Joining us now are Joe Biggs and cameraman Michael Zimmerman. And of course, they went to San Antonio for the Hillary Clinton rally. We want to get their impressions, let them tell us what they saw. And of course, they had uh, a very valuable tool stolen from them to boot. So we're going to talk to uh, Michael Zimmerman about that. So give us your, uh, your impression of the, uh, of the rally. First of all, how big was it? Uh, I would say roughly about 500 people inside that area. What they call it the historic Sunset Station. It's uh, right in downtown San Antonio. And, and it's kind of funny because when we got back here, I started reading through some of the articles and people are quite frankly lying. I mean, they're saying thousands of people showed up and they're using these tricky camera angles so they can only show like the immediate little area where they kind of force people into the solarium, and corralled them in there. Outside of that, it was very empty inside. I mean, it was not even a full area. Not the kind of crowds that you saw when you went to see Donald oh, Trump. Oh, yeah. Donald Trump's going to pull in 20 plus thousand people. Yeah. And, you know. And that was genuine. You were there. Oh, they, yeah. They weren't using camera angles. Yeah, there was no the camera crowds. angles. I mean, that was yeah. the Dallas Mavericks basketball coliseum. I mean, it was packed to the brim. And you saw motivated people at the Trump thing. You, you had people that were willing to talk and have conversations. Here you had a lot of people that were just like, 
just kind of zombified. And when you would talk to them, just really didn't seem there. They were taking selfies. I saw, you know, I kept pointing to his attention. There were girls going in front of this Clinton picture where it looked like a, a, an old photo of Stalin. And they were taking selfies in front of it and just people crowding around it and just thinking it was the coolest thing in the world to be around. And I just thought it was completely disgusting. You know, well, I think there are a lot of low information voters because, quite frankly, that's what they want. She only had her first live interview less than a month ago with Wolf Blitzer. And he asked her what her accomplishments were. Remember, she pulled a blank. Yeah. She, she kind of zoned out. She didn't have anything that she could come up with. They're, they're trying to protect her. As I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, the Democrat uh, Party top brass has coalesced around her. They're, she's a very managed, very packaged candidate. Uh, they want to move all the opposition out of the way. We saw no opposition in the debate as we were watching it live the other night. Everybody fell into line, even the guys who are polling 0% would not challenge her to try to push out. And of course, Bernie gave her a pass on the email <laughs> issue, saying, I don't want to hear about your emails. Well, it's not about her emails. It's about national security. They use that to justify everything, but they don't want to have that conversation. And some voices within the Democrat Party are saying, this is a very dangerous situation because we're going to have somebody who really hasn't been tested, who really hasn't been vetted, who hasn't been challenged on her issues, and she is going to be challenged. And there are some strong contenders that are going to uh, come out. Mm -hmm. Whoever comes out of the GOP uh, situation is going to be a lot stronger, I think, because there are a lot more people that are there uh, in, in that uh, yeah. in that in that debate. So. And it, it seemed like, too, at the, uh, in the rally or the uh, debate that everyone was just kind of playing softball with her and they're all trying to boost her up and help her. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they put uh, O'Malley on one side, Sanders on the other, and they kept just kind of like, Oh, well, remember back a couple of years ago, I supported Hillary for that. And they would shake hands and talk and laugh. You don't see that in the GOP debate. You saw hit after hit after hit. It was just like a reality show. And even I was surprised the other day I was watching Fox and Trump even came out and he was talking to, I believe it was one of the nightly guys. I can't remember right now, but he said, when I went on, it was like a circus, like a reality show. But then when you had the Democratic debate, it was just softball question after softball question. No one really got challenged on anything. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like everybody was there to help boost Hillary up. And that's exactly how I feel, too. And a lot of the people there today, I mean... Well, Anderson Cooper said he wasn't going to try to really pit them against each other with any harm. Anderson pressure. Mockingbird Cooper? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Jake Tapper made a point of, of doing that and said he was going to do that. Yeah. But you got hassled, uh, as cameraman, Michael, you got hassled uh, by security. You go in with a lot of equipment. Right. Uh, tell us tell us how security was there. So they had a all, every department you can imagine out there today. They had Secret Service, Homeland Security. Santa Which, by the way, she's the only candidate that gets Secret Service. Of course. The only candidate. And and Donald Trump was complaining about that, saying this is, this is not fair. And even pointed out, now, some people have said that may, perhaps maybe the reason that she's getting Secret Service protection is because she's a former First Lady. However, Barack Obama was getting it far earlier than Donald Trump. He had much smaller crowds, and he said, it's because I'm a Republican, they don't want to give it to me. So who knows? But certainly they're not treating him the same way they did Barack Obama uh, eight years ago. But sorry, go ahead. So they had Secret Service there. Along right. The so when we first entered this secure area they had set up at the, the Sunset Station there, they had bomb-sniffing dogs go through our bags. They pat, well, patted us down, went over us with metal detectors, and... That was that was fine. And then we exited to film some of the people outside and then re-enter the area. And when I re-entered the area, they asked me to empty out my pockets and they found a, my Leatherman multi-tool for mm -hmm. just adjusting. It has a screwdriver on it. It has a, a small knife on it. Mm -hmm. uh, a like wrench. a Swiss Army knife. Exactly. Like that, yeah. yeah, very, very small knife. Definitely uh, not, not a weapon, mm -hmm. primarily at least. And anyway, they nail clippers. It's probably more dangerous. Right, than right, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and they told me that they would hang on to that for me, and that I could pick it up when we leave. And when I went back to speak to that same Secret Service agent, she told me, uh, "I'm sorry, I couldn't keep that here." Mm. Mm. So yeah, the feds let me hang on to that for you, and they're going to give that. That's going to be part of the package for free things when you vote for her. <laughs> hey, there we go. First door prize for all you coming across looking for the American dream. When you but, went to the Trump rally, did you have uh, bomb sniffing dogs and all that kind of stuff there? Um, well, I went through the back uh, credential media area, so it wasn't as serious. Most of these people were kind of well known. It's the same people I see when I go to events all the time. So mm -hmm. you already had that kind of rapport built and all that. So it wasn't that bad. But it looked like they had that in the regular entrance. They had stuff like that, but it's very light. Mm -hmm. You didn't see too many security going crazy. Not that much of going on. But one of the things we talked about earlier, 
this event, this is Hillary Clinton. She's supposed to be uh, speaking for women everywhere for feminism mm -hmm. or feminism. She's supposed to be uh, the number one, uh, you know, candidate for Hispanics and blacks. And, you know, Texas is the second largest state. There's a lot of people in Texas. 500 people show up. Yeah. 500 people. Yeah, yeah. Texas, when I went to the- Right, after, right after her uh, debate performance. Oh, his, her, her victory winning, lap. Her, yes, her victory exactly. that CNN says, but clearly the poll numbers show that she didn't win that. But Donald Trump packs in 20,000 people, not just 20,000 Americans, but people who came over from other countries. That's mm. the kind of pull he's getting. 500 people came in this little area, and I, I just can't get over that. And the fact that, the pictures that they had there, these Stalin banners. Imagine if Donald Trump would have done that. If any of one of the, the GOP candidates would have had these pictures, that would be blasted all over the news all day, every day. This guy's going to be a dictator. He's a racist. He wants to build a wall. He's like Stalin. Uh, screw this guy. You, know? you mentioned the music that they had. Oh, okay. They had, that's the funniest <laughs> part. So when they mention, you know, Viva Los Hillary, whatever, and they, they announce her and she comes out with Castro. You hear the... <laughs> Meanwhile, there's the, you know, mariachi the customary band, yeah. mariachi band and the girls with the flags and the color, colorful clothes and stuff. Again, if that would have been a GOP guy, yeah. racist, 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 Donald Trump's racist. How is he going to play this racist music? You're playing the stereotypes, white right? You're, you're, you're reducing the Mexican culture to a stereotype. When you're on the right, would say. you can be called a racist, but when you're on the left being racist... Well, that's not racist. That's just being politically correct and cool and normal and mm -hmm. hipster and ready for a new age in America. Yeah, yeah. She owns those voters, so she can she can do whatever she oh, wants. Oh, literally, she probably paid for them to be there oh, because, yeah. I mean, quite honestly, I felt more sick being at that than I did, you know, almost catching malaria in Afghanistan. I mean, that is not a, uh, a pleasant feeling. <laughs> well, real quickly, did you see any signs for Bernie Sanders? Or? No, I didn't see anything about Bernie Sanders. There was a lot of people outside with the... Uh, Hillary for prison stuff. Uh, there was one other guy that had a shirt. You know, like we said, we've been sold out for a while. But people got creative, made their own banners. There was a lot of people out there saying that Hillary's not for babies. There was a lot of Hispanic people on the outside that couldn't get in who said that Hillary Hillary Clinton kills babies. She's not for women. Um, there was a large number of protesters, especially considering the size of the Hillary uh, supporters. There. Oh, I mean, there was a lot. It was yeah. equally 500 inside about, you know, Almost 500 outside stretched along the fence out that way, protesting up and down the road. Interesting. So, yeah. you know, like I said, mainstream media is going to blow it up proportion, say that she had this huge hit crowd. Everyone showed up. Texas is behind Hillary. Her first line was, who's ready to turn Texas blue? You know, and then all of a sudden you hear, you hear the guys outside the fence, Hillary for prison, blue, boo, hell no. <laughs> and it completely overpowered what her PA system had going with her going and I'm sitting there like I had to smile on my face. And that's when I just started screaming, Hillary for prison. I got motivated. I was at that first, I was about ready to pull like a Hulk Hogan and rip my t-shirt off and just go like, ah. So she's got a crowd of only about 500, although they're exaggerating. Yeah. That. There's a large number of protesters there compared to, uh, to Trump who had a, a gigantic crowd, over 20,000 people. Oh, yeah. How many protesters would you say you had there? Um, Probably 200. Wow. I mean, wow. for anti. Yeah, yeah. So huge, compared huge to that difference, crowd, yeah. huge difference. Well, that's it for tonight's news. Uh, join us again tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much, Joe and Michael Zimmerman. Hillary for prison. <laughs>
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.